anticipated. Um, you would think that I would have remembered to try some of this out before we actually got started, but I did not. So <laughs> I'm getting our YouTube live stream set up right now, and hopefully that will be um, fairly, uh, fairly seamless. All right, there we go. I think we are, um, we're live in both places. Um, if not, the good news is, is being recorded. So this will be up on uh, the under the genfluence.beer blog uh, shortly, probably tonight or by the latest tomorrow. Uh, so welcome everyone. And I have to start off with one more apology. I did about eight hours straight of training earlier this week. It was beer training, so it was a lot of fun, but uh, my voice is not really holding up all that great. So I made sure that I had the microphone on and we are able to, um, hopefully you're able to hear me just fine. I've got some water here. I've also got some of my homebrew. Uh, this is one of my New England IPAs. I rarely brew them, but from time to time I do. Uh, so I may have to take a couple of breaks to take some sips of water and, um, make sure that I don't just start coughing or anything, but if I do, that's why. So with all of that being said, thank you for joining me. For those of you watching in the future, thank you also. And tonight what we're going to do is go through our, uh, the beer program training, uh, what, I, what I'm envisioning the judging, uh, the judging training to look like. And then if we've got some time, we're also going to talk about the BJCP, the Beer Judge Certification Program, um, a little bit about the framework because it can be very confusing. If we don't get to it tonight, don't worry. I do have that later on um, as one of our very first training sessions to cover that. I'm hopeful that we'll be able to get to it tonight, but we'll definitely get to it. It can be kind of confusing um, and kind of hard to find info. So. As we're talking, as you have questions, please put them in the Q&A on YouTube. You can also put those in the comments. Um, we're still working on some of the logistics of making sure that I can see those questions um, in the event that I can't. I will definitely revisit them later. And the YouTube channel name link is under the Genfluence. And um, you should, I'm hopeful that you'll be able to find it on there. I know a few people um, we're able to actually subscribe and uh, we are live on there. So if for some reason it looks like participant wise, we're well under the um, under the 100 person max. So I'm hopeful that anybody who wants to join us on the Zoom webinar will be able to. Um, if not, you should also receive a link within the Zoom, uh, within your RSVP link that will tell you, uh, will contain the link to the YouTube channel. So with that, I'm going to share my screen with you all as soon as I get the proper slides pulled up. And we're going to talk about the, the beer judge, the training overview. Um, this is something that you'll hear me say a lot that I was super not expecting the, uh, the amount of response that I got, which is great. Um, I'm so excited to have so many women interested and becoming beer judges, because like I said, a lot of times I am the only person, I'm the only woman at the table. And, you know, that's something that definitely needs to change. And so that's what we're doing here tonight. And if you'll excuse me for just a moment, I'm going to stop this share and get this in front of me so I can actually kind of look at you all while I'm talking. All right, so here we go. Now I've got it, um, like opening opening night kind of uh, issues, right? So when we're talking through this, um, like I was saying, I am super stoked that over 500 women signed up. Actually last night when I checked, we were about 535 or so. So we have women from 10 different countries. We have women from 44 different US states. Uh, so we have, uh, people all over the world who, who are interested in doing this. And, you know, beyond that, 
Uh, I've had a host of volunteers who have offered their support, who have offered their expertise to help everyone really succeed in, in whatever form of beer judging you choose to do going forward. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Uh, but I've been blown away, not only by the amount of people interested, but in the amount of BJCP judges, you know, professional brewers, all sorts of people, um, you know, some people have even reached out and said, I don't know what exactly I can do, but I'm here to support this. I want to see this succeed. So thank you everyone for being here. Thank you for signing up. Uh, so a little bit about me. Uh, I always joke that I am all beer all the time. I am an advanced Cicerone. I, there, I think currently there's about 139 advanced Cicerones worldwide. I'm studying for my master Cicerone exam in November of 2021. So, you know, it's a benefit to me of doing this beer judge training is each week I'm talking about beer styles. I'm helping you all learn how to evaluate these beer styles and learning myself. I, every time I do some kind of training, uh, particularly with beer, I learn something new. Uh, you know, I'm challenged in a new way by people uh, having questions. So it's also great practice doing this for me for my Master Cicerone exam. Currently, there's 19 Master Cicerones in the world. Um, I'm also a national BJCP judge. Hopefully soon I will be a, a master BJCP beer judge. Um, I actually uh, was just in the same shoes that a lot of you will hopefully find yourselves in in a few months. This past weekend, I retook my beer tasting exam uh, because I am currently one point away from being a master BJCP judge, um, which was a little heartbreaking to get that email. Um, but you know, we move forward with it. So. I just took my tasting exam this past weekend. Um, I'm a little fresh from it and uh, we'll definitely, I'll share my experiences with the tasting exam and the written exam as we move through this. Uh, I am also a newly trained BJCP exam grader. So when we talk in a little bit about the BJCP overview, one of the things to keep in mind is that the BJCP is a volunteer only organization. So it's volunteer led and you know, one of the issues that we, we will also cover with it being volunteer led is that there are very long wait times for things like getting exams back. Uh, so you have to be at least a national level BJCP judge to be an exam grader. But once you are an exam grader, then you're able to grade tasting exams, grade written exams, help out to move that process along, which benefits everyone because it means we can have more tasting exams and more written exams. So that was something that was very important to me when I got the when I achieved the national BJCP rank was to be able to give back and make it easier for other people to be able to move through the BJCP certification process. And of course, if you're here, you already know I'm hosting a free virtual BJCP training course and we'll go through what I envision the course to look like in just a couple of minutes. I'm also the co-host of a podcast called False Bottom Girls. I co-host that with my good friend, Rachel Hudson, who is the co-owner and head brewer of Pilot Brewing Company in Charlotte. Uh, you know, our, our podcast focuses really on all things beer and brewing. We looked around and saw that there weren't a lot of women's voices in the beer and brewing podcast arena. Um, and when they were there, it wasn't necessarily technical brewing, uh, which is great. There's, there's a ton of room for a lot of different kinds of beer podcasts. Uh, but we saw this as an opportunity to be two beer experts talking about beer who happen to be women. I am on the American Homebrewers Association Governing Committee, and I'm very excited to say that I just got reelected to my second term. Uh, so I will serve a second three-year term that's going to begin in June. On the Governing Committee, one of the things I do is I'm on the HomebrewCon Seminar Selection Committee. Um, you know, this is diversifying the beer industry is, is who I am. It's what I do in every beer room that I'm in. And it was important to me to not only be a part of the seminar selection, but also to help encourage more women to submit proposals you know, and then ultimately be able to present on stage. So I'm part of the seminar selection committee, and I'm also the chair of the industry subcommittee for the AHA. I'm the chapter lead of our Atlanta Pink Boots Society. 
that's a relatively new responsibility for me, but one I'm very excited about. Uh, I'm award-winning home brewer and pro brewer. Like I said, I've got some of my home brew here with me today because I've been a little nervous about uh, actually getting this program started. I think excited is probably a better word um, and definitely very exhilarated to actually get this, this program that I've been thinking about and talking about for so long off the ground. And I do have a full-time job. So that, that's all kind of things I do, you know, after work and on weekends. So for my full-time job, I'm the beer program manager at New Realm Brewing Company. Uh, we currently have three locations. We're getting ready to open a fourth next month. And I am based out of our Atlanta facility. Before I joined New Realm, I was the executive director of the North American Craft Maltsers Guild. So I was working on the supply side of craft beer. Um, that's a really fantastic group. And it, it really served to make me more interested in the raw ingredients that go into beer because beer is an agricultural product and there's so many facets of of that industry that that can be affected so i was super super happy to have that job before i joined new realm i'm also a road to 100 mentor this is uh the road to 100 was really the thing that inspired me to stop thinking about doing this and actually doing it and I'm currently also a Brewers Association, their mentorship program. I'm a mentor there as well. So when I say I'm all beer all the time, I mean that I'm all beer all the time. So before we get into the program, I'm going to take a quick sip of my beer. And it's very good. Um, I'm very pleased with the way this turned out. So what this program is going to look like. This is going to be a 14 week free virtual training program. So this is going to cover beer styles and it's going to specifically cover uh, sp specifically from the 2015 style guidelines. And we'll talk about the style guidelines a little bit at the end. We're also going to talk about judging techniques and best practices. Uh, I The way that I judge is not the only way to judge. And as you move through the beer judging process, you'll develop your own style. You'll judge with judges whose style you really like. You'll take the best practices from them. You'll judge with judges who you really don't like. Maybe you won't do the things that they do. We're going to talk about the judging techniques and best practices that I employ or that I've experienced within the industry. So just know that my way is not the only way. And that's part of becoming a beer judge is understanding what way works the best for you, and also how to communicate that to fellow judges. We'll also talk about sensory evaluation skills. As you can probably tell, looking behind me, I've got all of my beer flavor maps up. I really love sensory, and I love talking about sensory. And, you know, beer sensory is a lot of fun. You're drinking beer, uh, and you're talking about beer. So this is what our 14-week program is going to look like. I want to be able to prepare all of you to pass your BJCP beer judge entrance exam, as well as your BJCP beer judging exam. So the beer judging exam is what I just took this past weekend. We'll talk more about both of those. And what I also want you to keep in mind, I'll probably say this a couple of times during this session today. You know, when we talk about the BJCP, it is 100% possible to be a beer judge without being in the BJCP. Being in the BJCP makes it a little easier for competition organizers to find you. It makes it easier for you to for you to find opportunities to really hone your judging skills. You don't have to be in the BJCP to be, be a beer judge. So if you're here, let's say you're moving through this uh, Cicerone program, or if you're just looking for a fun hobby to do, you're in the right place. You do not have to go through the BJCP program to be, or be a beer judge. And just know that as we go through this program, if you decide that the BJCP isn't really for you, I support that decision. That's 100%. I, you know, before I was doing, uh, before I got into BJCP, I thought really long and hard about whether I wanted to be a BJCP beer judge. I was already on my Cicerone path, but um, truthfully, I was really worried that I would just lose my ability to just drink a beer, to just be able to sit down and enjoy a beer. Um, that hasn't gone away. That's still possible. 
I just say all that to know that if you're here and you're thinking that the BJCP program isn't for you, that's totally fine. You're still going to learn a lot from this training. I also want to create a support network of women within the beer judging community. And that kind of goes hand in hand with that last point of getting more women at the table. Frequently, I'm the only woman at the table. Um, and there's really no reason for it. And so one thing that we'll talk about as we as we go through this program is, you know, the good experiences, but also the bad experiences. And I don't share experiences like that to turn anybody off. But it's important, as I'm sure most of you know, you know, to know that there's solidarity, that you have a community you can go to when, you know, when you're like, hey, that thing that happened, was that weird? Or like, this was a very frustrating thing because it's, these things don't happen in isolation. So it's really important for me that you know that we have this support network of women within the beer judging community who are, are there to help share those experiences, to help process, to offer their experiences, to offer support. Um, so, you know, that getting more women at the table, that's what this program is really about. So when we're talking about what these sessions will look like, we will be doing weekly sessions. I've got the training schedule that we'll look at briefly in just a moment. Um, this won't, um, I'm not going to go through them all line for line, but I'll generally explain it. And then of course these slides will be available later. And in a moment, we'll talk about the, um, the website and the members area of the website. Just so that way you have an idea and you know where you can go to find this information. But our weekly sessions will cover the beer styles specifically outlined in the 2015 style guidelines. I have my very gross, very torn up, dirty copy of BJCP guidelines. Um, we're going to cover the style guidelines within the BJCP, the 2015 guidelines for a couple of reasons. One, if you're planning to go into the BJCP, this is what you will be tested on. Two, for probably 80% of the competitions that you judge, you will be using the BJCP guidelines. So it's great to just get really familiar with these guidelines. Know that the Brewers Association has their own guidelines. They're generally the same. Uh, the Brewers Association updates their guidelines each um, annually. So sometimes beer styles change. They might get new names. They might be combined. They may be split apart. The BJCP doesn't update theirs as often. Uh, so we will specifically be covering the beer styles outlined in the 2015 style guidelines. For each session, I'll use the same template, the same presentation. Um, you know, uh, when I first started this, I was thinking like maybe, maybe 40, maybe 50 if I was lucky. Uh, people would sign up and um, we've really exceeded that. So for these weekly sessions, it will be the same template, the same kind of presentation. Each session will be recorded. So that's really great news if you're not able to make one of the sessions or if you're using these weekly sessions as a way to supplement your own studying, you'll be able to access those probably within 48 hours and uh, you know, be able to watch them or refer to them as you like. Don't feel like you have to be at every single weekly session to succeed. Um, that's absolutely not true. I want you to use these sessions in a way that fits your schedule and fits your goals. And then all sessions plus additional resources will be available for you all at underthegemfluence.beer. In just a moment, I'll hop over to my website and show you all how you can access those. Um, but I'm not confident enough in my Zoom skills to stop this share and go to the other screen and then come back. So just know that I'll show you it uh, in just a couple minutes when we're through with this. So additional opportunities. Like I said, we had a ton of people reach out offering to help. Some of the people who reached out are BJCP judges. So what we're going to do is have them review practice score sheets that you will fill out and provide feedback to participants. Uh, I'm still working on precisely what that process will look like, but it is very important for you all to be able to practice and also for you to get feedback on that. So you know how you can improve your judging. You can also, you know, learn how you can maximize those points on the tasting exam if you decide to go the BJCP route. We'll also try to set up some virtual tasting sessions. So for example, let's say tonight I say, hey everyone, on Wednesday night at 6.30, I'm going to do a tasting session. I'm going to be tasting a, a New England IPA. 
grab a New England IPA, grab a score sheet, join me. We'll talk through the style. We'll taste through our beers and talk about what we're perceiving with each one. Um, these will be announced ahead of time. But I am I am hoping that that's going to be um, something that my BJCP judges who want to help um, really take advantage of. And again, these will also be recorded. So if you aren't able to make one, but you'd really like to go back and listen to it, that will be available to you. Uh, we will also set up, I'm hoping to set up, particularly as our vaccination rates are starting to improve and it seems like it's getting safer depending on where you live in the United States. Um, it is getting safer slowly to be able to um, do things like meetups. We're going to assist in setting up some regional meetups. So if you've got a, you know, a great group and you're in uh, Nashville, or you're in Atlanta, um, or Charlotte, someplace like that, uh, we'll make sure that we can connect all of you. So you can do the same thing. Hey, all, I'm going to be at this brewery on Sunday afternoon. I think I'm going to have Kolsch. And if you guys want to grab a Kolsch, or we can, you know, grab one from the bar, sit down, talk about it, work on some score sheets. Um, I know it sounds like I just said, like, you guys are going to be like, hey, cool, let's meet up and do homework. But I promise you, when you're judging beer, it's a lot of fun. Um, so it's, it doesn't sound quite as much like homework as I just made it sound. You will also have the ability to schedule one-on-ones with me and also with our other mentors. And I'll have more information about that available to you uh, in the future, uh, in the near future. Um, so as we're going through this, provide feedback, make suggestions. Like I said, this um, has, the scope has drastically increased. And I really want to make sure that I'm supporting you and assisting you in getting you the resources that you need. And you know, the the uh, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Uh, maybe if you say something like really rude, but I can't imagine that we would probably have that here. But uh, you know, any anything that you need, any opportunities that you see, let me know, and we'll talk in I think actually the next slide about how you're going to be able to do that. So what to expect. After this meeting, our next meeting is going, our next interest meeting will be just like this one. It's going to be set up on May 2nd. Uh, it, look for recurring calendar invites for our weekly beer style sessions. Again, you don't have to make every single one. You can use these and however you would like, but I will send out some recurring calendar invites. So they're on your calendar. So you have them. If you're able to make it, great. All of the sessions will be posted on the website within 48 hours of each live session. So if you miss it, you'll be able to see it probably within the next day or so. And then communications regarding additional opportunities for judging practice. This one is um, really cool. Actually, tomorrow night, uh, I'm going to a brewery just north of Atlanta because a local homebrew club is having an IPA competition within their club. And they actually, uh, one of the organizers reached out because he had saw, he saw my post about training women to be beer judges. And he said, hey, I'm already doing this competition. And if you've got some, some people who are interested in coming, um, we're already going to have experienced judges at a table with you know five or six new judges. And it's going to be a kind of a combination where the entrants are going to get score sheets back with feedback. And the, the new judges are going to be able to sit with an experienced judge, ask questions, learn best practices. Uh, so that's something that, you know, another really great benefit now of having uh, this great group of women is, uh, you know, if somebody doesn't know where to look for a beer judge, they know now that they can contact me and I can let them know um, who's in their area or I can pass along those opportunities. So I've, we've already gotten um, one additional opportunity for beer judging and I'm very confident we'll be able to get more. Um, and then BJCP beer judging exams in the fall of 2021. Um, that doesn't sound as scary as it might um, here on this very first day in this very first interest meeting, but um, I've already requested ex tasting exams um, in Charlotte, North Carolina and in Atlanta, Georgia. Once those are finalized, that will go up on the event calendar and you will get notification of that. I will also be working with judges in different regions to set up 
beer judging exams, make sure that those are made available to all of you. But this originally, the program was going to be 14 weeks with me hosting a couple of exams back when I thought like maybe, maybe 30 or 40 women would be interested. Uh, so we will work on getting those beer judging exams scheduled. And like I said, we, um, I th think that we'll probably have some time to talk about the BJCP uh, overview in a little bit, but um, that is definitely a hurdle is being able to find a beer judging exam near you and then being able to register for it. Know that that's something in the background that I'll be working on and making that as accessible to as many of you as we can going to get one more sip, or I guess I should say another, this won't, this won't be one more sip. So ways that you can contact me. My preference is email if you want to contact me directly. So that's jen at underthegemfluence.beer. Contact me as much as you need. I always like jokingly tell people that I will let you know when you're bothering me too much. And I say that, but I mean that in the nicest possible way. Don't ever feel like you can't contact me with a question. You definitely can. And I will also be setting up kind of office hours. So, um, you know, just to be able to manage my schedule. Uh, that way I can uh, make sure that I'm making enough time in my schedule to answer questions. So once I kind of have that figured out, I will definitely let you know. So you know, if you email me, say on a Monday, that it might be Wednesday between five and seven that you get an email back from me. Uh, but please email me. You can also contact me via the form on the website that we'll look at in just a moment. Uh, that is under the gymfluence.beer. Contact me, beer judge, and we will look at that. One of the ways that I have this set up also is that you have the option of submitting feedback anonymously. So if, or if any kind of questions. So if for whatever reason, you're not comfortable contacting me directly, that's totally fine. Know that this is an option for you. And there, as you're filling out the form, there's an option to submit anon anonymously. And then there's also a, an option to request, you know, yes, I would like a contact, yes, contact me back. Um, if you submit anonymously, what we will do is basically aggregate those questions, keep it as anonymous as possible, um, and then submit it back to the group. So know that if you submit something anonymously to me, um, I'm not going to be like, yes, and then never respond to you again. Uh, we will uh, put that information out there in the aggregate so nobody is identified. So just know that you have the option to contact me anonymously if you'd like. Ask questions, send feedback. Um, I will continue to say this. I, I love talking about beer. I love talking to you all about beer. I, I know that we've got some people on here who have who can probably attest to texting me or sending me a DM or emailing me and I, I will get back to you. So don't ever hesitate to ask questions. Don't hesitate to send feedback for me because I want to make sure that I am supporting you the best way that I can and that if there's something that I'm not able to do, I can find somebody who can do that for you. So the next few slides are the training schedule. Don't get overwhelmed. Don't 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 uh, start automatically thinking that this is going to be too much. Um, I've broken this up the way that I have to make it far more manageable. Uh, we will be doing our training sessions on Mondays uh, within my schedule. I know Monday is a super weird day to do it, um, but Monday is the one day consistently that I rarely have something on my calendar. So we will get started on May 10th. The first thing we're going to do is talk about the BJCP tasting exam overview and then talk about beer styles. So again, if Mondays will never work for you, you don't need to worry about that. We will have those sessions uploaded shortly after they conclude. So you will have access to them. And then of course you're able to, um, to email me or contact me with any questions that you have. Then the next week we are going to cover sensory techniques and descriptive language. Uh, so I put these two in the front. At first I was really worried about you know, rushing too much or only talking about the beer styles, which is great. It's great institutional knowledge to have. But if we're not talking about sensory techniques or descriptive languages, um, you know, it's 
uh, is not the full picture. So we're going to start out with those. So that way, as we move through the styles each week, you will have that frame of reference and, and you'll be able to understand and start practicing those skills right away. So each week after that, I've given you the category of the BJ within the BJCP guidelines of what we'll be talking about. And then that beer sub styles is a list of each one of those styles that's within each of those categories. So for example, with standard American beer, those sub styles that are within that category are American light lager, American lager, cream ale, and American wheat beer. So when you see these sub styles, don't worry on weeks that there are a lot. Um, it is, I've got a note on here later, some styles are going to be tested way more often than other styles. So as we're moving through the training schedule, you will have an idea of which, you know, which ones you should, you know, which ones are you able to just really read through the guidelines once or twice, and that's fine. So something like a, um, a check pale logger, you're unlikely to see that on a tasting exam. So it's one that you can read through. You don't have to spend a whole lot of time on it. If it's something like a Czech premium pale lager, like a Pilsner or Kell, that might be one that we'll spend a little more time talking about. So when you see these lists of sub, sub styles, don't think that you need to be an expert in every single one of these sub styles each week. So again, just keep that in mind as we're going through these next couple of slides. Um, and again, you know, I, I broke it down because it's, it's so much more manageable to think about it in just a week at a time, you know, a, a week chunk. Uh, so you can see we go through uh, between probably like five to maybe up to like 12, 15 sub styles each week. Again, some of those are just going to get a very brief mention. Others we might talk about a little bit more. And then what I have also done is built in review weeks. So these are going to be if there's something that we need to, you know, finish up on one of the uh, one of the other styles, if there's a lot of questions about one um, or, you know, if these could also just be more of an open open forum session where we can just generally ask questions and talk about what we've learned so far. So we've got more and more and more. Again, some of these will be emphasized more than others. And as you can see, I've got another review in there. So one thing to note, um, and this is also why I was very excited to actually do a very uh, closer reading of the guidelines for the tasting exam, is that if you're looking at your BJCP guidelines, you'll see that there are more than these categories that I have listed here. There's actually several more. Uh, so categories 27 through 34, those are not tested. On the, on the BJCP beer judging exam. Um, and this is a little late in the game to mention that you may hear me say the tasting exam or the beer judging exam, those are interchangeable. Uh, so those styles within those categories, we're not really going to cover in the training. Uh, they are still worthwhile to read through. And for those of you taking your online exam, You'll, you'll definitely want to read through them. Um, but again, you're not going to see those on your beer judging exam. So those are ones, again, you can just read through them. Be aware if when you're going to competitions to judge, you'll definitely judge some of those categories, but you have the opportunity during the competition to reference your guidelines often. So when we're talking about study guidance, these are, my suggestions for you, uh, you know, take some time to think through what your schedule looks like, what your goals are, and, you know, how much time you can set aside for this and develop your own study framework. Uh, if, you know, if this is going to be more of just an accountability, I shouldn't say just, if this is going to be more of an accountability and not so much of being, being very rigid week to week, that's great. Spend some time thinking about what this process is going to look like for you and how this training fits into that process. I would generally say set aside time each week to read through the beer sub styles for that week. Budget five to 10 minutes per style. And I say that because uh, as you look through the BJCP guidelines, you'll see that they, they are relatively short. It really, you could breeze through a style in maybe two to three minutes. 
So budget five to 10 minutes per style. If you're looking at that list and we have five styles to talk about that week, maybe set aside an hour and you know, you'll, you'll probably be finished well before that. But just budget maybe five to 10 minutes per style to read through the guidelines. Um, I've already got this on here. Some won't need as much time or attention as others. And I'll make sure that you all know that as we go through. Attend the weekly sessions or review the session slides and recordings, whatever works for your schedule. I will suggest supplemental resources for you along the way, but the 2015 guidelines is going to be your primary source. Um, I One thing about me um, going through all these years of beer training, I have paid for almost all of it out of pocket and it gets very expensive. So I love to utilize free and low cost resources as much as possible. And there is a ton of information out there, especially for something like the BJCP, that you don't need to buy somebody else's outlines or buy flashcards or anything like that. Really, you can do, you can be entirely successful only looking at the BJCP guidelines. I've got a few other free resources for you, um, but don't feel like this is something where you need to make a huge investment in supplemental materials. Really, the 2015 guidelines is going to be the main resource that you're going to use for this. Also, establish a schedule for practicing writing out score sheets. And we'll talk about score sheets when we get to the beer judging exam overview in a couple of weeks. Um, my recommendation, aim for four score sheets per month, one per week. Again, that's not a requirement. That's just, you know, each week you have a chance to practice. Maybe you practice on one of the styles that we've talked about that week. Reference the BJCP tasting exam overview. We'll talk about that uh, just to ensure that you're being as thorough as possible. And then upload those score sheets for review and feedback. Work up to being able to complete your score sheets within 15 minutes. And we'll talk about that again when we get to the beer judging exam overview as part of our very first session. Don't spend time trying to memorize any of the stats. Uh, you should have a general idea of things like ABV range, so alcohol range, bitterness range, color range. You don't need to memorize stats for this. Um, and you know, really, even if you're on, if you're working your way through the Cicerone program, you really don't need to like rote memorize stats for style guidelines until you're um, going for your advanced Cicerone. So, don't spend time trying to memorize the stats. And you'll hear me say that over and over again, because I think that's one thing that, um, you know, I know I sometimes will go down that rabbit hole of trying to memorize stats. And for BJCP, you just really don't need to do that. So next steps, we will talk about the member area in just a moment. Um, but when we're finished here tonight, these are the things that you can do. Join the member area of the website that's where the slides will be uploaded. That's where a lot of the resources, that's where all of the resources will be either uploaded or linked. Download the 2015 BJCP guidelines app. I've got mine on my phone. See right there, BJCP styles. That is free for Apple and Android. So I did make a note on here and there, you may see a few different apps when you go to download it. For Apple, you want the BJCP styles, all upper, mostly uppercase, all one word. For Android, you want to get the BJCP 2015 beer styles. Those are the names of the two apps that I recommend that you download. Print, purchase, or download a hard copy of the BJCP 2015 style guides, guidelines. Yours will look much nicer than mine. They won't be all gross and dirty with um, weird weird stains <laughs> and, and like curled up edges. So you can print it. Um, I believe I printed mine like maybe at work one day. Um, it's, I think it's about maybe 80 pages or so. You can print it um, someplace like Office Max, you know, at an office supply store. I think it's usually less than $10 to have it printed two sides. It really doesn't need to be color. You can do it in black and white. The little seal on the front is the only thing that's in color. So you can do black and white. Um, you can also purchase, uh, the BJCP has partnered with a self-publishing website. You can purchase a spiral bound copy of the BJCP guidelines, I believe it's around $14.
you can do that if you'd like, then you've got one that's probably not, that probably won't get nearly as gross looking as mine. Um, that link is right there. And if you're, I, I do better with having a hard copy to look at. If you're not able to print, you don't want to print, you don't actually need that physical hard copy, just download the PDF and look at that on whatever device you have. I say to do that in addition to the app uh, because the hard copy version is going to have more information available in it for you. So the apps have most of the information. The BJCP guidelines in a hard copy are going to have more information about style comparisons, um, about uh, history, comments. There's not, not everything in the hard copy of the guidelines is included in the app. So it's really important to have both. And when you're studying, I highly recommend studying from the PDF version of the guidelines rather than from your app. The app for me is great if I'm, you know, writing something and I think what's the SRM of an American IPA, I can just pull up the app on my phone really quick and double check. If I'm looking for commercial examples, if I'm sitting at a bar and I think like, I don't think this is what a Keller beer is supposed to taste like, I can pull up the guidelines and read through it. Uh, so. Th that's what the app guidelines are really good for. They're also great even before the pandemic. A lot of homebrew competitions and pro competitions were moving away from having hard copies of the guidelines available because most people had it on their on their phone. Uh, so if you're going in to judge at a competition, just know that there's a very high likelihood that they will want you to have the uh, the app on your phone and to reference that. So. With that, I'm going to stop this share. And um, I do see very quickly as I'm looking at the Q&A because I want to be mindful of time. Um, the recorded sessions will be available online uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, I don't plan to make those unavailable in the event that the recorded sessions for whatever reason are not going to be available online anymore, I will make sure that you all are aware. So if you need to you know, download the PDFs or whatever you need to do, you have plenty of time to do that. So I'm going to jump over to my other screen here and we're going to talk briefly about the website and how you all can sign up. I'm going to get one more sip of beer. I'm going to get another sip of beer. So this is under the gemfluence.beer. You can get to the beer judge training in a couple of ways. The easiest way is going to be right here on the homepage. Go to sign up. You will see this pop up. I've already registered myself here. So I'm going to go down here to already have an account sign in. Um, I promise you all, I will try very hard to figure out how to make the sign in easier to get to than this. Uh, it seems like for every step I take trying to organize this training in a way that's fairly um, user friendly and also gen friendly, I encounter like six more things I have to do before I get to that step. And so creating that like super easy sign in button on the website has not um, floated to the top of the priority list, but I will get it done. Uh, so I'm going to go here and go to sign in. So once you sign in, and again, this is completely free. Uh, I know I'd had a couple of people reach out to say, hey, you know, my friend is interested, but can't attend the interest meetings. This is really the first step that you can do is go sign in on this member area because this is where all of our resources are going to live for this. So as you can see, I've only got three little things up there right now. I also have on here to check back often as new content is being added. So the first thing I'll talk about is this submit a question or feedback. This is the contact form I was just discussing. So you can see here, you have the option to submit feedback anonymously, understanding that you won't receive a personal response, but your feedback will be, your question will be answered. It will be sent out as general feedback to, to the entire group. And again, anonymous. So it's, you can, if for whatever reason, you're not comfortable asking a question um, to me personally, feel free to put it on there. And really, if you've got, uh, if, you know, as I'm getting questions from people, 
I will ask for your permission to be able to share that question and, you know, in my response, if it's something that is applicable to other people within the program, but just know I won't, I won't share any of the questions or anything I get from you all without asking first. And even when I do, it's not going to be um, identified as being from a particular person. So on here, name, email, I've got a drop down here. Beer cell questions, beer judging questions, BJCP related questions, Cicerone related question, other. That's really the only thing that I'm going to, um, you know, require for a, a uh, drop down. I don't want to require a whole bunch of information, particularly when I'm letting you submit anonymously, but it is helpful for me to kind of see the question and get into that mindset. And uh, then you can put in your message here. You can hit boop. That goes directly to my email. So that is our form. The next thing I'll talk about is the beer judge training resources. This is going to be your place to go if you, after we're done here, you say, you think like, wait, wh what were the things that she said to do? You're going to find everything you need to know here. And um, this actually, now that I've built it, is going to be very frequently used by myself uh, because if any of you have spent time on the BJCP website, you know that it's very difficult to navigate it. Uh, truthfully, I'm on the, the BJCP website almost every day, and I have to find the same information for the first time every time I'm there. I never remember where I'm able to find it. So I've aggregated everything that I use the most often onto this page right here. And most of them are just going to connect you to the BJCP website. Um, but just trust me that this is like, this makes your life so much easier as you're trying to navigate the BJCP. So you see, I've got the link there for the style guidelines and you can, this goes directly to the PDF that you're able to print. Um, and then I also have your BJCP score sheets on here. With this information, I, I tried to put on there um, why it's included on the resources page. But just know that we will talk about the, you know, the BJCP score sheet, the competition versus the examination versions. Also, the BJCP beer exam study guide, that was the one that you may have heard me reference um, a few minutes ago. So that's going to be available on there as well. Um, the BJCP score sheet guide, this is, it provides guidance for exam graders. It also, once I discovered this, I forget how many points my tasting exam increased, but it was something like 10 points uh, because it tells you exactly how the tasting exam is graded and how they allot points. And I do have uh, in a couple of weeks for our first session when we're talking about the tasting exam, I will go over that in a little bit more depth and then we'll, we'll come back to it before any of you are um, ready to take your tasting exam again, because it will be a lot of information to kind of walk into, uh, but after you've worked through the styles and everything, it will make a lot more sense. I still like to have the information available to you. So, you know, going into your studying kind of what, how you should be framing uh, some of your studying. Then we also have the beer fault list. This is going to be your best friend. When I first started judging and I discovered this beer fault list, I printed it out. It just gives a very brief, it's not the most comprehensive thing, but it is one page that gives you things like acetaldehyde, diacetyl. It tells you what the flavor is that you would be getting in beer. And then it gives you a list of possible suggestions. Like I said, this thing was tattered in my back pocket because I printed it out, I folded it up, I took it with me to every competition and just had it laid out on the table until I got more comfortable saying, oh, this is acetaldehyde that I'm tasting. These are some of the possible causes for it. Uh, so that beer fault list is going to be your best friend. Also the complete beer fault guide is up there right now. So this is a very comprehensive summary. I will say it's a guide. It has not been peer reviewed. I still think it's a fantastic resource, but I do like to provide that caveat. Um, some information, some of it, a very small amount of it is not entirely accurate, uh, but I have i don't know that I've seen an instance where it's just completely incorrect. But that is useful for most of the things I've seen that aren't entirely accurate are going to be more the esoteric things that there just really isn't a lot of information available out there for that. 
So that is the Beer Judge training resources. And then the last thing I'll show you is this Beer Judge training event calendar. Um, what I will do here is you can see this is the same picture of me twice. Um, what I will do uh, is add all of our weekly sessions to the event calendar. Each one of those listings will have um, the category, the sub style. So this will be where you can come and reference and see what the upcoming styles are. This is also where I will add things like upcoming tasting exams, um, upcoming opportunities to judge. So this, this, I'm really picturing this to be very much a one-stop shop for seeing all of those things in one spot, just to save you from having to check like six different websites and knowing that as soon as I have the information available, I will put it up here. So those are going to be the three pages that we have right now. As I said, you can check back um, because I will be adding more content beyond adding the set, these kinds of sessions each time. Um, so again, if there's something that you're using, um, I do actually have an additional resource. I was waiting for permission from the author um, to be able to post it in that Beer Judge training resources. So that will go up within the next couple of days as well. But definitely this is going to be your landing page to find everything you need to know about the judging program. And I know I'm getting kind of close on time, so I'm not going to go through the BJCP overview today because I want to make sure we're giving it enough time. But what I can do is go ahead and post that and just know when we have our first session on May 9th that we'll, we'll spend some time talking through the BJCP program, what that looks like. We're also going to talk about the tasting exam and what that looks like. And then we'll talk a little bit just about beer styles. Uh, I was talking to somebody earlier today about, you know, beer styles are about consensus. They evolve, they change over time. There's no style police. As much as sometimes I consider myself the style police, you know, I, I have no actual police power. Unfortunately, I can't arrest people for <laughs> making beer styles um, and calling them one thing um, when they're very much not. So we'll spend some time talking about what makes a beer style. So as we're moving through the different sub styles each week, you kind of have that framework uh, because there's all sorts of different things that will really decide what, what is a beer style and what's not a beer style. So I see we have a couple of questions in the Q&A that I will get to. I will say if um, you have any questions in the next few minutes, and I haven't been looking at the chat, but I've been very overwhelmed by seeing the, the number of unread messages <laughs> build up. Um, I'm one of those people who always has to clear the push notifications on my phone or I won't sleep at night. Uh, so if you have any questions in these last few minutes, make sure to pop those into the Q&A and we will pull this up. Um, so Adriana, what time will the Monday sessions be? Um, these are, I, I think right now I'm going to have them at 7 p.m. Eastern and that's going to, uh, that may change. I will let you all know. Um, I'm thinking either 6.30 or, or 6.30 or 7, but they'll be kind of in that range. Um, I'm also an early bird, so um, like going past 9 o'clock isn't, um, isn't probably very ide ideal for me. Um, so... I think, ugh, I don't know how to, okay, answer that live. I think I'm, I think I'm getting the hang of this uh, Zoom webinar. So I didn't see it in the Q&A, but I did see it pop up just now in the chat, um, the, the difference between um, Cicerone and BJCP. So uh, there, there are quite a few differences between the two. Um, the, the Cicerone program, I would say broadly, the Cicerone program is more focused on the beer industry, whereas the BJCP program is more focused on beer judging, specifically home brewing. But there is also, you know, I've judged plenty of BJCP sanctioned competitions that are pro. So I also think about it as the Cicerone program wants you to know, you know, about this much about all of these different topics. BJCP wants you to know, like, you can't even see my hands, a lot, right? This much about beer styles and a little bit about the brewing process. So for anybody I talk to who is interested in pursuing Cicerone, 
the very first thing I tell them is sign up to start beer judging. It's the best way to improve your palate. It's, and, and we'll talk about some of this in a couple of weeks, but it's far less expensive to do than the Cicerone program. And it will deepen your level and your appreciation and respect for beer styles in a way that is, is hard to do without doing BJCP. When I talk to BJCP people, so BJCP judges, I don't always recommend for them to do Cicerone because the, the skills needed, you know, it depends on what their goals are within the beer industry, whereas BJCP is more for just the beer judging side. I shouldn't say just the beer judging side, but it is more focused on beer judging specifically on the, the homebrew community side. Uh, let's see what other... Yes, so thank you, Kat, for the question. Is there any way you can add a practice Cicerone test to the resources page, specifically the written portion, considering that this is all that is available to take at this moment for certified Cicerone? Yes, I can definitely do that. And thank you for suggesting that. So I'm actually going to write that down because otherwise I'll be finished here and be all like exhilarated um, and forget to do that. So I can definitely do that. Um, one other thing that I'm hopeful I'll be able to do is get some quizzes up and going and making those available for all of you to, um, to be able to take those kind of, you know, that sort of recall, challenge your knowledge. Uh, so yeah, we can definitely do that with the, the written portion of the Cicerone test. And, you know, we also, um, I do have a couple of, um, people who I may also be able to tap to maybe do a, a supplementary session on kind of strategies for the Cicerone exam for those of you who are here as part of furthering your Cicerone journey. So how long will the sessions be? I'm planning right now for the sessions to be, um, I would say probably 90 minutes. I want to make sure that we have enough time to cover everything and it's not really rushed. Um, that, you know, if, if it turns out that most weeks were done in an hour, then I'll say, hey, you know what, from now on, let's just make the sessions an hour. If it's taking us two hours, then we'll make them two hours. Generally, I think an hour to an hour and a half will be about the length of time for the sessions. So one of the other things that's, that's why I wanted to keep the same template for each week as we move through the beer styles. So if you've gone through, a, you know, a few of the sessions and, and you can be like, you know what, I'm, I'm ready to go. I can, I can do this on my own. I can review these at a different time. Then you're able to do that. Right now I'm planning for probably an hour, an hour and a half. And thank you. You're the best. Thank you, Kat. You are the best. <laughs> Um, okay, so yes, thank you so much for asking, asking this question, Alexia. Is there a way that participants will be able to connect with one another? Um, so yes, I am working on that. I've had some conversations with a couple of different people on the best way to be able to do that. So I know, for example, with the Road to, uh, Road to Cicerone program, we use GroupMe. Um, my... I'm trying to figure out the best way to do that um, because I know not everybody has Facebook, not everybody wants to use social media. Um, and I'm, I don't know that I will be able to make that happen on my website. Uh, just I, full transparency, I use the uh, Squarespace and I don't know that they have that. I see the Discord was suggested. I'm thinking Discord, it seems like more people are using that. Um, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the best way to do that. So I really do want to make this a really great way that everybody's able to interact with each other. And it's not just, you know, you all each individually interacting with me. Um, so thank you for ask, asking that question and know that I'm working on the best way. And thank you everyone who is giving me suggestions. Uh, what I may do is come up with a few options and just send that out as a quick poll to everyone to see what's going to work the best for most people. I know personally, I had to get rid of Facebook on my phone. So, you know, if I want to look at it, I have to go to the website. I want to be able to make sure that I can connect with all of you um, as soon as possible. So that is coming. Thank you for asking that question. Thank you, Angie, for Slack. Um, can everyone sign up or is there a limit on how many women can do the program? 
I don't have a limit on the amount of women who can do this program. Um, when we're talking about things, and Harmony, this will go kind of into your question as well. Um, as we're going through the beer judging exam process, one of the things I'll touch on, and I mentioned it once here already, is that the availability of, of tasting exams is a hurdle. Um, and then the seat limit on tasting exams is also a hurdle. Um, between those two steps, registering for a seat is also a hurdle. Um, there, uh, the BJCP is a really great organization. There are some days that I think maybe we just burn it all down and start over. So um, we will talk about some of those hurdles. Uh, but as we're talking about the training program, there is not a limit to how many women can sign up. Um, that's also part of why you know I, I switched this to a Zoom webinar format why I set up this members only area where all of this will be kind of a repository uh, for, for all the information that you need. So that way this is scalable. Um, I'm also hopeful that this content will be evergreen or at least part of a program, you know, that we can repeat as more women are interested. So for this, for this beer training program that we're doing, there's no limit to the amount of women who can sign up. Um, so the exam, uh, we will talk about the, the different levels of exams in a couple of weeks, but briefly, there are three levels of BJCP exam. The first is the online um, entrance exam. The second is the beer judge tasting exam. The, you have to pass the online exam before you can set for the tasting exam. There's a third exam after that that's the written exam. The written exam is necessary if you want to move up to the national master or grandmaster levels. Um, you all will learn this. The BJCP is really into hierarchies and really into ranking everybody. They rank their graders, they rank everybody. So that's part of where it starts to get a little complicated. Uh, but for the online exam, that's something that's available to you to take any time. You can take the exam once a day until you pass. The tasting exam is a 90 minute exam. And what that roughly the structure is you have six beers to fill out a score sheet for. So that's about 15 minutes per beer. Uh, so you have six beers within 90 minutes. Your beers come out in 15 minute increments. And the exam locations are chosen when a, a national BJCP judge or higher decides they want to administer the tasting exam and schedules it. So the locations are up to the administrators that also there's a lot of a lot of considerations that go into when and where an exam will be scheduled, uh, but they do limit the amount of tasting exams you can do each month. I believe it's limited to 10 exams and that is 10 international exams. Um, so I, what I will also do on the Beer Judge Training Resources and as well on the event calendar is put up some of those upcoming tasting exams. So if there's one that is near you and you want to sign up for it, go ahead and sign up for it. And I would say if you see one, so you know you all saw the training schedule, we'll be going towards the beginning of August. If you see one that's near you in, you know, in July, in August onward, Go ahead and register for it. Do it. Pull that Band-Aid right off. Register for it. There's also a limit to the amount of people who can take the exam. So the sooner you can register for that exam, the better. And then that is, okay, so with Kim, uh, this I think this will probably be my last question because I know we're going a little over time. Do you have to take a tasting exam where you live? No, I flew to Indianapolis to take my exam this weekend. You do not typically have to go to those kinds of extremes, but when I miss my master rank by one point, it gets uh, really spiteful <laughs> and, and personal and I get, you know, I get very uh, dedicated to getting that point and advancing up that level. You can take an, a, a tasting exam wherever you can find a seat provided that, you know, you want to travel to to that place, um, or if, if it's nearby, that's fantastic. Particularly since the, both the tasting and the written exam are only 90 minutes long. Um, you know, it can sometimes be a long day to drive somewhere to take a 90 minute exam and drive back. But I can give you a couple of examples. Um, I've taken two tasting exams over the years in Richmond, Virginia. At the time I lived in Charlotte and I went, um, 
up to Richmond for the weekend and, you know, drove up on Friday, Saturday morning, 9.30 a.m., boom, knocked out a tasting exam. I had the rest of the weekend in Richmond um, to go do whatever I'd like. Uh, so you can definitely kind of plan around it that way. And, uh, but yeah, the, the short answer after I gave you a very long answer is that the, um, uh, you don't have to take the exam where you live. You can take the exam where you can get a seat in the exam. That's how I ended up in Indianapolis. Um, Sandy Cockerham, who you all will meet, she's the highest ranking BJCP judge who is a woman. Uh, she was hosting a BJCP exam in Indianapolis. And uh, it was really fun to be able to go up and spend some time with her and take the exam up there. And then I think that is... I had one more note about that. I think I saw somebody post um, in the chat. It just popped up um, in Atlanta. So I can, it is not uh, settled yet, but the first weekend in October is when I've requested a testing date in Atlanta. Um, that will be on a Saturday. Once that is finalized, that will go up. You all will be the first to know. I've also requested an exam date in Charlotte in North Carolina on the 18th of September. So those are some upcoming exams that I scheduled really particularly for women going through this training, um, it, particularly back when I thought it would just be like a few people from the Southeast. Uh, but we will work on, you know, finding out where people regionally, um, where it makes sense to be able to schedule an exam and reach out. Again, that's kind of going to be the background. Um, reaching out to judges in those areas to see what we can do to help them schedule a tasting exam for you. Uh, so with that, we're about five minutes past time. Thank you everyone very much for, for signing up, for being here. I've been overwhelmed and so excited and I've been met with so much support from the community and also from, you know, from within the BJCP, uh, from within the beer industry. So many people are rooting for you guys and, um, I get choked up when I think about it every time. I'm such a sap about this stuff. <laughs> but please, please, please go ahead and sign up for the member area. Look at all these resources and we will see you guys in a couple of weeks on uh, May 9th. You will definitely get more information and 